In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here. It's from the 2024 Leaving Cert exam honours level paper one. If you're looking for a different question from that paper, you should be able to find a playlist in the description below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully so it's similar to what you're used to your teacher doing. But it's we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage, pause, rewind, stop, rewatch, all those things you can do on YouTube. If you find this video useful or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like and subscribe. And what helps most is sharing it with a friend that's doing the Leave a Cert or one that's going to do it next year. In question four, part A, they ask us to differentiate from first principles. Now, I think there's two types of students. Uh, the first type just memorizes how to do uh, differentiate by, by first principles. If you're good at that, brilliant. You're going to get full marks here. Uh, if you're not good at it, this isn't going to help you. I'm not going to teach you how to memorize it. I don't know how to uh, really just practice, practice, practice. Uh, the next type of student wants to understand what differentiation is. And if you understand what differentiation, how it really works, this question is again easy. So while this is a 20, 30 minute lesson um, longer uh, to answer questions and stuff, I'm, I'm just going to try and give you the idea of it in two or three minutes. Uh, obviously, go to your book, go to your teacher, look at other YouTube videos for more of an idea. Okay, so there's a formula for differentiation that, again, a lot of people just memorize. I'm not going to allow us to memorize it. I'm going to show us where it comes from. I, I'll write it in a moment. Um, if I just get any, fun any function like this, I, I don't care what it looks like. I, I'm not trying to make it look like that one any function what differentiation is it's the slope at a certain point that's what differentiation is but how we find it is we look at two points and we get the slope between these two points so remember the formula for slope slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or to put that another way uh, y is this axis and x is this axis but this axis is also called like whatever function we're dealing with. The value of, of this function is on, well, not this one, because I didn't draw it, is on this axis. So this value here and this value here, this value down here are the x's. Okay, so bear that in mind. So when I write the formula I'm gonna write, I want you to know I'm actually just writing this guy. So the formula that you're asked mostly to memorize is uh, f x plus h minus f x. That's really just y2 minus y1. That's a y value, or in this case, it's this value, y value minus another y value. That's all this is here. The bottom row, usually they just write h, but really what the bottom row is x plus h minus x. Again, the corresponding, the y value minus the y value, the x value minus the x value the y value, and there's the x value in there. And, but just x minus x just becomes, uh, let me, I actually just wrote really that already, just becomes h on the bottom row. So that's where we get this. There's one thing missing here though. Um, differentiation is all about one point, not two. So how do we get two points to become one? We write this, uh, limit as h goes to zero. We say, imagine if the gap between x and x plus h became zero. And that's what this function does. It says, get as close as you want, get even closer, get even closer again. Get so close, it really just becomes one point. And that's where we get this formula. And now, for writing that, you're already getting a mark, or, or two. Um, I'm not sure how many. So, what do we do with that? Uh, we try and fill everything in we can. Uh, we have fx. We have H, really we're just missing this guy. So let me do that to the side. We'll keep this, this line here uh, clean. And um, to the side, let's find F. Actually, you know what? It's gonna take a bit of room. So let me do it here actually, because it will take quite a bit of room. Uh, we're gonna have to find Fx plus H. Now that's not too hard to find. Fx plus H is just this function, but everywhere you see an X, you put, you put an x plus h. So instead of this x, we put x plus h squared. Instead of x squared, x plus h squared. Minus seven, instead of x, it's x plus h. Minus 10. Clean that up, uh, or 
Well, we don't have to. Actually, we, we do. For later on, we want to expand all this out. Expand this out, we get x squared, x times h, h times x. We get two xh's. We get h squared, uh, seven times x. We get minus seven x, minus seven h. Uh, make sure you're not missing minuses when you're doing things like this. Uh, minus ten. Um, and that's that's it. That's that's as good as we we need. So let's go back to this line here, and actually it's, I could have done this to the side, it's this one I need a lot of room for. So if we write this line again, um, the derivative of x, that's equal to the limit as h goes to zero. Instead of this guy, we'll put all of this in here, so bear with me while I write all this out. And then minus, take away fx. And fx is just up here. But remember the minus. Minus x squared. Minus minus 7x. Minus minus 10. So plus 10. So that's uh, the top row row. The bottom row is just divided by h. Now I'm running out of room, but that's all right. I'll, I'll do a lot of stuff here on the board. Um, the great thing that happens here is the fx really gets destroyed. So you can see the fx here, there's an x squared, well there's an x squared here, or sorry, minus x squared and an x squared, it's gone. There's a 7x, well there's a minus 7x, there's a 10, uh, there's a minus 10, a lot of that disappears. And look what's left, um, this term has a h in it, this term has a h, this term has a h, and that's it. Uh, very important thing is while h gets really close to zero, it's not actually zero. So there's no problem with um, dividing by it. So we can divide h into all of these guys. h goes in to every one of them and what we're left with is the limit of h goes to zero and what's left here is 2x uh, plus h and minus 7. Just be careful, I ran out a bit of room there, use another line or two for that one. All that's left to do is the limit of h to 0. We couldn't, we couldn't um, make h go to 0 when it was on the bottom row, because it's dangerous dividing by 0. And like it's not actually going, it's just approaching 0. But it's not dangerous at all adding something that's really, really small. Um, and instead of adding something that's so impossibly small, it's okay to say, it just doesn't exist. Don't need to add it on. It's, it's so small, it really doesn't matter. So this becomes the limit, or you can think of basically the limit as finally putting h to zero if you want. It's not technically correct. But um, the next line just becomes 2x. Doesn't get affected by the whole h thing. h, we ignore it because it's so small, it doesn't matter. And then minus seven. And that's it, that's the derivative Oh, actually, that's one thing we should check. You know how to differentiate. Just differentiate yourself. Um, and maybe even at the very start, just so you know what you're aiming for. The derivative of this, 2 times x, and it becomes x to the power 1. And this becomes minus 7. And that's the answer you get down here. Okay, hopefully hopefully that helped you some, some of you a little bit. But again, if you want to memorize how to do this, there's probably no harm in the leave assert. Uh, once you go to college or anything like that, you do need to start understanding the uh, differentiation a lot more. But honestly, for the leave insert, just go ahead and memorize it. Do about 20, 30 practice questions. You'll, you'll be fine. In part B, they give us a different function, g of x, and they basically ask us to differentiate it and find the value of the derivative at uh, minus 2. Basically, they want us to find sorry, the derivative at uh, minus 2. So first we have to differentiate this. It's a quotient, it's a division of two functions. So we need to use the quotient rule. Uh, have a look, have a look up your book, it's in here. And uh, basically it says, take the bottom row and multiply by the derivative of the top. Let me write it out here. Um, so the bottom row, x to the power four plus three, multiplied by the derivative of the top. So what's the derivative of the top? Just six. 6, that becomes nothing, so multiply by 6. Then take away the top row left alone, multiply by the derivative of the bottom. That's 4x cubed, and that disappears. 
and then divide all of that by the bottom row squared plus three. These are these are a mess of a question. I, I've always hated their uh, quotient rule questions. They're just messy. Uh, feel free to leave it like this. You don't have to clean that up too much because you're really you're just putting minus two in anyway. Um, so feel free to just leave it like this. You could multiply it out. Usually you would. Uh, let me just skip, uh, I guess. Yeah, let me clean this up for you. But again, you don't have to. You would get, I think, minus 18 x to the power four minus four x cubed plus 18. And the bottom row, there's not much you can do with it. Uh, but again, all you're really doing, this is gx, all you're really doing is finding g, a derivative of g minus two. So just put minus two in here. Do it carefully, do, put it all in one go, do it three, four times, <laughs> whatever whatever way you, <laughs> you're gonna have to do this a lot in the exam, so whatever way you're good at doing it, uh, do it that way. Do each term separately. Just be careful, um, make sure you're, you're double checking your answer. I got minus 238 on the top row, when I put minus two in everywhere. And on the bottom row, I got uh, 361. And uh, you, you could leave your answer like that, or I guess you could write it as uh, sorry, minus 0 0.659. But the, I, I, the fraction would be a better answer. Uh, I should warn you though, uh, whenever I get an answer that looks all neat like this, I, I always check the solution and check the marking scheme to go, oh, did I make a mistake? Is this the right answer? The marking scheme is not out yet, so I'm at, I'm not hundred percent sure that's the right answer. I I, I double checked it. Uh, it seems to be right, so I'll just have to go with it. Anyway, let's move on to part C. Uh, part C is just a thinking question. There's not much maths at all. Uh, we're gonna have to give justification for our answer. So listen to what I say and write something like that in the case of an exam. Um, so they tell us. Uh, let's see what they say. They tell us there's a continuous function. They use some scary words and 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 um, symbols. Don't worry too much about that. It's a continuous function. It's a, the graph of h x has a local minimum at the point zero five. Uh, state whether the following statement is true: the value of h x must be at least five. All real values, blah blah, whatever. Um, now I don't know what this function looks like, but let me just draw an example of a of a function. Um, that has a minimum, a, a cubic function here, has a minimum. And again, they don't, didn't tell us anything about it, it just tells us it is a continuous function. This is a continuous function. Um, this is one you're very used to dealing with. It has a local minimum. Here it is in the image, and we'll just say it's at zero, uh, zero 0,5. So we can even draw in axis with that, uh, zero 0,5, that's zero, zero, zero 0,0005. Something like that. So let's just have a think about the statement. What does the statement say? It says the value of hx, remember the y-axis tells us the value of hx. The value of hx here is five. And when it goes up, it's six, seven, eight, nine. So you're just reading, you're just going, if you want another value here, you go here in the graph and read it on the axis. That's the value of hx. So this value is what, whatever it is, it's a hundred, it's a made up function. I, I, I just made this up, it's any number I want. Um, this again is uh, six, seven, eight. This is um, seven, six, five. And very importantly, down here, four, zero, minus 10. So this example that I just made up, a very easy example to make up, this proves what they said. They said the value of hx must be at least five everywhere. Well, no, it doesn't. Here's, here's a local minimum, it is a local minimum, but it's not at least five here. It's not five here, it's not bigger than five here. So no, what they said is false. Um, so that's the answer to that question, is false. And the reason I would give is, I would probably just draw this, and I would say a local minimum doesn't have to be the, the smallest number for a function, it doesn't have to be the lowest value for a function. Something like that would be, I think, should be fine. Uh, if you can think of a better answer for that, a, a nice simple line to write, put it in the comments. I'll, I'll pin it, I'll make sure it's the top, uh, it's the top one. Um, but th that's what I would do, something like that. Okay, that's uh, all for question four. 
If you have any other questions, any mistakes I made, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.